Hey guys, welcome to Garth Grills. I am stoked you are here. My name is Garth and I make videos about barbecuing on my Weber Kettle, my Weber Kettle Grill. <laughs> Now, today's video, we are going to be talking about the very basics of how to use a Weber grill. So if you are brand new to barbecuing or if you are just interested in how a Weber works, then this video is for you. Now, we're going to be talking about five things when it comes to the grill. So we're gonna go over the anatomy of the barbecue, talk about some of the parts and some of the names of the items on the barbecue itself. We're gonna talk about the common items that you'd be using for heating your barbecue, so charcoal and wood. Now we're also gonna be talking about how to configure the charcoal in your barbecue. So uh, there's a lot of different ways in which you can barbecue. Primarily, we'll be talking about grilling and low and slow, and they do require two very different configurations for how you're gonna place your charcoal in the grill. Uh, we'll also talk about how to heat the charcoal, I get that question a lot, and then lastly, we will talk about airflow and how to manage the temperature of your barbecue. All right, so let's first talk about the anatomy of the barbecue and what some of the pieces are so that when you start to grill, you know exactly where to find them and how they work. Now, in case you're curious, my personal version of the Weber kettle grill is the Performer Series, which happens to have this nice little kickout table. So if you are in the market for a barbecue or if you're looking at different types of Webers, uh, I highly recommend getting one with a table because there's so many times that I'm coming here and I'm putting the thing I'm about to cook or I have my chimney, uh, whatever it is, having a table is a nice to have. Now let's start at the very top we have our lid, and on the lid we have our heat shield. So when you go to pick up the lid uh, while you're cooking, you're not gonna burn yourself or have too much heat on your hands, which is a nice to have. Um, over here, uh, most of the Webers will have a thermometer. Now the thermometer is gonna be taking the temperature of the top of the lid. And so when you're looking at doing grilling versus low and slow, you're gonna be using this thermometer in very different ways. And so through practice and experience, uh, you will learn how to take advantage of your thermometer and maybe how to use it in conjunction with a meat probe or a thermometer for your piece of meat. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but this is reading the temperature at the top of the lid. Now, because your charcoal is gonna be down here in the bottom, in your charcoal grate, which I'll show you in just a second. That's the hottest part of the barbecue, of course. And depending on where your charcoals are, it's gonna read a slightly different temperature. Now over here we have a damper. The damper is an airflow for your Weber. So you can open it and it has four holes and this is fully open and you can also kind of slowly close it here. Now Weber's with the charcoal grilling operate on airflow. So you have a vent on the top, and you also have access to a vent on the bottom, which I'll show you in just a second what that looks like inside the barbecue. But between these two vents, air is going from the bottom up. So the more airflow you have coming through the barbecue, the hotter the barbecue is gonna get. So some people prefer to manage their heat by using the top damper here. I personally like to keep this one open and I control my heat by using the bottom vent here. So all the way to the right is wide open, all the way to the left is closed. And so if I want to increase my heat, I open the vent. If I want to decrease, I slowly close the vent and that's how I gauge my temperature. All right, so let's open up the lid. Get my baskets out of the way here. Now on the top here, we have your cooking grate. The cooking grate that I personally have on this particular barbecue has Weber's gourmet barbecue system, which means that the center part can actually come out and I can put accessories on here, such as their pizza stone, etc. cetera. Um, but every Weber grill grate otherwise will have two sides that flip up because during barbecuing, you may have some charcoal off to the side and you may need to add more charcoal as you're barbecuing. So you can flip these open while you're cooking, throw some more charcoals in there, and then close it back up. All right, so that is your cooking grate. Now I'm gonna take this off real quick. Now below your cooking grate, you have your charcoal grate. 
Now the charcoal grate is where you're going to place your charcoals. Now you can either place your charcoals directly on the charcoal grate or in a bit we'll talk about charcoal placement. You can use some baskets. So there's different methods for how you're going to place your charcoals depending on if you're doing some grilling or if you're doing more low and slow or smoking, indirect heat, etc. So we'll talk about all that when we get to the charcoal placement portion of this video. Now below the charcoal grate, you can start to see the vents. Now that's gonna be how you manage your airflow. Now below this, this is called Weber's One Touch Cleaning System. So not only is it a way to control your vents, but it's also a way to clean your barbecue because as the barbecue coals or your wood is burning, it's creating ash and that's falling to the bottom of the kettle bowl here. And so as you are cooking or after your cook, you wanna move this back and forth and that's going to drop the ash into your pan here. Now, some of the barbecues that Weber makes on the Weber original, you are gonna have a ash pan as opposed to this system here. So the pan is not as nice, of course, because uh, this is a little bit more self-contained, but um, yeah, this is Weber's one-touch cleaning system. Okay, so let's talk charcoal. Now, there are two primary types of charcoal that are used when cooking on a Weber charcoal grill. Now, the first and probably the most popular and widely used type is what you're gonna see at any local home improvement store or even your grocery store, and that is a briquette. Now, there are a couple different types of briquettes. You can see here, it's just a small little square. It's basically compressed ash that they've made into this tidy little square. And there are benefits to using briquettes uh, because they're all the same size, they're all the same shape, they're very good for longer cooks because you get a lot of predictability out of a briquette. So if I wanted to line this up for a 12 hour cook because I'm doing a brisket or a pork shoulder, I know precisely, give or take, how long I'm gonna get out of a briquette. Now briquettes also take a little bit longer to get up to heat. So if you wanted to grill something very quickly, uh, briquettes sometimes just take a little bit longer. So just good to know. But otherwise, briquettes are gonna be your most common way of cooking on a charcoal grill. And I'll talk in just a little bit about how you heat up your charcoal before putting it on the grill. Now also, we have what's called lump charcoal. Lump charcoal was just wood that's been burned over. And so there's different types of wood that give off different types of flavors. And lump charcoal is good for if I wanna do some quick grilling because lump charcoal gets hot very quickly and it's good for direct heat. So if I wanted to cook a burger or if I wanted to cook some hot dogs or a steak that uh, needs to have a reverse sear, um, I'll use lump charcoal because again, it gets very hot very quickly. Um, but again, it's not very predictable for how long I'm going to get out of it. So, uh, choose your charcoal wisely. The third piece I have up here is just a piece of wood. Now this is Weber's pecan wood for smoking and you would not use this for just strictly barbecuing. Uh, what you would do is you actually place this either on or beside your heat source, your charcoal, and allow the smoke from the wood to then infuse the thing that you're cooking. So oftentimes I'm using wood chunks if I'm doing a longer cook because I wanna get that smoke flavor inside of the piece of meat itself. So uh, again, I place this usually on my charcoal and then allow that smoke to build up and get into the meat. So those are your three most common types of heat sources that you're using on a charcoal grill. All right, so now that we've talked about the different types of charcoals that we have, we have the lump charcoal, we have our briquette, and we also have some wood chunks. I want to talk about the coal placement because it really depends on what type of barbecuing you're looking to do. If you're coming out here and you want to cook up some burgers or some hot dogs, I would call that grilling. Anything underneath 20 minutes or so is considered grilling versus anything that's longer would just be either low and slow, indirect heat, etc. And we'll kind of get into that in just a second. So uh, if I'm going to do some grilling, what I would do is one of two things. 
I can either uh, place my charcoal uh, directly on my charcoal grate after I've heated them up. So I have a bunch of hot charcoals directly in the center of my charcoal grate. And then I would place my cooking grate back on top and allow the heat to just directly heat up the thing that I'm cooking. So that's gonna be grilling. So you have your hot charcoals right here in the center and that can either be a briquette or you have your lump charcoal. Um, you're not gonna put uncooked charcoal down there. You're gonna get them nice and hot first and then place them in your charcoal grate. Now, that's one method of just placing the charcoal directly on the charcoal grate. I often like to use the baskets because the baskets allow me to um, be a bit more specific about where the charcoals are. And then also, it allows it to get a bit hotter as well because when you have a bunch of the charcoal all grouped together, it actually burns hotter because they're feeding off each other as opposed to just kind of spread out here on the charcoal grate. So baskets, not necessary, but they can be very helpful for different types of cooks. Now, on the other side of grilling is gonna be your longer cooks, your smoking, indirect heat. Uh, if you wanted to smoke a steak or if you wanted to smoke a brisket or smoke a pork shoulder, there's gonna be different methods. So when I cook a tri-tip, for example, I'm actually filling up one of my baskets three-fourths of the way with uncooked charcoal. And then I'm setting it off to the side. So I have a bunch of untouched charcoal right here in the basket. And then from there, I'm actually taking some hot charcoals and placing them in the corner. And that's going to light the other charcoals very slowly. So it's going to actually take time to burn through all that charcoal and then I can play with my events to keep my temperature at the right place that I want it to be so that I can time my cook and ensure that it's not getting too hot, it's not getting too cold, and I'm allowing for all those flavors so I can place a piece of a wood in here as well and I can allow all those flavors to impact the meat and actually add a lot of flavor. So that's gonna be, if I fill up one of these baskets with uncooked charcoal, that'll get me about two to four hours. Now, another method for much lo longer cooks is actually placing charcoal, what they call it a snake method, and I can actually place them all the way around the perimeter of my charcoal grate. So I would just stack them one at a time, two by two or one by one, depending on how long you need and how much heat you need. And that will allow for a 12 to 14 hour cook. All right, so now let's talk about how to heat up your charcoal. Uh, this is actually a question I get quite a lot about what methods do you use to get your charcoals nice and hot for putting on the barbecue. Now again, if you're going to be doing some grilling where you just kind of want to come out here and get some burgers on the barbecue, uh, the best way and the easiest way of getting your charcoals heated up is through what's called a charcoal chimney. And that is this guy right here. This one's from Weber. I think I bought it at Home Depot for $20. Um, now there's two sides to the chimney. We have the large side, and then we have the bottom of the chimney, which actually acts as an inverted chimney, um, which has a smaller basket. So it depends on how many charcoals you want to light up. So the first step is that you wanna get a source of fuel inside of your chimney. So not lighter fluid. Uh, when I first started barbecuing, I would actually wad up some newspaper, put it underneath my chimney, and then place all my charcoals to the very top. Again, if I'm doing some grilling, I need a lot of charcoals hot that I can just pour into either my baskets or on top of the charcoal grate. Wad up the newspapers, light the newspapers, and then that will be enough heat and fire to get the charcoals going. And then the airflow system of the chimney just allows for those charcoals to heat themselves up. And there will be a ton of smoke at first, and you know that you're done and ready to pour when you start getting a nice flame above here and there's no more smoke. So using newspaper is one of the methods. Since then, I've actually discovered Weber's lighter cubes. So these are these guys right here. You can actually see the picture on the back is just as good as well. But you just place one of the lighter cubes either directly at the bottom of the basket. You can also put it underneath either way. Um, but they produce enough fire 
where it'll actually catch the light of the charcoals and you don't have all the mess of newspaper flying around your backyard. So I highly recommend these. These are $5 for about 24 cubes. They last a long time. And that's just the easiest way of getting your charcoals going. So again, if you're doing some grilling, fill up your basket all the way or however much you need for how big of a piece of meat you're doing. So if you're just doing a couple burgers, you may only need a half a basket. Um, but if you're doing uh, the low and slow method where you already have a basket or a couple of baskets or you're using the slow and sear, which is a larger basket, uh, if you only need a few charcoals heated up, then use the, the bottom of the chimney. Place your uh, fire lighter at the bottom, put about eight or 10 charcoals on here, light it up, and then it'll be good in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so lastly, guys, I wanna talk about airflow management and how to maintain temperatures, because I think that is probably one of the more intimidating things about using a Weber charcoal grill is that you don't have the precision of just setting your temperature and letting it go. That's also part of the thing that I love about cooking on this barbecue is that it, it takes a bit of involvement. You have to actually participate in the cooking experience with your barbecue. Now, like I said, these barbecues operate by airflow. So air will come from the bottom and out the top, which means that you need to be mindful of how long you wanna cook your meat for and how hot you want your barbecue to get. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do this is I leave the top damper all the way open so I have a consistent variable, so I don't have this thing changing. And then from there, I manage my airflow using my bottom vent. So left all the way closed, right all the way open. So if I'm looking for a lower temperature, I have my vents almost all the way closed, which means that I just have a little bit of air seeping through and that's gonna keep a lower temperature. But if I want my barbecue to heat up dramatically and quickly, then I will open up my vents all the way and allow that airflow to come up. Now, again, if you're doing grilling versus low and slow, it's gonna depend on where your charcoals are and where your meat is. So let's talk about grilling real quick. With grilling, you usually want a hot barbecue, which means I have my vents all the way open on the bottom, I have my vents open all the way up on the top, and I'm positioning my meat on the cooking grate above my charcoals, which means if I just wanna cook something quickly, having the lid off is gonna produce the hottest barbecue because I don't have anything dampening the airflow. If I have my lid on, because I wanna collect some of that smoke flavor, then it really doesn't matter where your vent is in comparison. So facing you to the left or to the right, because again, you have so much heat and so much air coming through that you don't have to be strategic about your airflow. Now that's gonna be very different when we talk about indirect heat and low and slow. So if I'm doing a longer cook for about four to six hours or even longer, then I have to be specific about where my charcoals are and where the meat is. So I'll have my charcoals off to the left here. I'll place my cooking grate back on top and I'll place my meat on the right side, which means my heat is over to the left and the meat is off to the right. So that's called indirect because we don't have it directly above, otherwise it's gonna to cook too quickly. Now the airflow is gonna matter tremendously, especially when it comes to smoke and the flavor. So if I want the flavoring of the smoke and the heat to slowly cook the meat, then I need the heat to come up and over and out. And so to do that, I would position my lid to the right. So now I have my charcoals over here producing heat. It's coming up and it can't escape because I don't have the vents. So the heat has to come up and over and then out of the vent. So that's the basics guys of how to manage your airflow. Again, in my personal opinion, it's been easiest to keep this one wide open and I manage my airflow with the bottom vent down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. I hope that you are getting into grilling and that you're enjoying it. 
uh, and I hope that you just learned a few things today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, press the bell, click like, do all the things, uh, and it will encourage me to make more videos about grilling. Um, also, I recently made a reverse seared Santa Maria tri-tip that you can check out, and I also did a fun spin on beer can chicken using hard kombucha, which actually turned out way better than I thought. So anyways, thank you guys for watching again, and enjoy this journey with me at Garth Grills.